glory to God. Well, will the circle be unbroken by the Lord, by the Lord? And the better always in the sky, Lord, in the sky, I was standing. A dear lady told me last week, she said, if you will preach, I'll give the minister $10,000. I'm holding you to it. <laughs> Praise God. If you've got 10 more thousand, I've got another song. <laughs> Romans chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. I want to use for a subject preaching a few minutes this morning, reconciliation, and really the atonement to be a stone, Jesus Christ, a stone for our sins at Calvary's cross. Would you bow your head? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace, Lord. And I ask by the help and grace of the Lord that you would help me to preach this message that I believe you have given unto me. And Lord, I would ask in the name of Jesus that every need that is made manifest in this place, that you would meet that need, and we ask it all in the great name of Jesus. Amen and amen. What I'm about to relate, I have related it before. And it'll bear repeating because of the tremendous truth that it contains. It was years ago, not so long after the turn of the 20th century, the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was falling all over America and around the world. And a church at a certain place, God was blessing, people were being saved, lives being changed, 
Hundreds were coming. But then there came a problem in that church. There was a young lady that had given her heart to Christ, been baptized with the Holy Spirit, and she and the pastor's son had fallen in love with each other and were to be married. Now, the problem with that was, it shouldn't have been a problem, but it was a problem. She had made her living before giving her heart to Christ as a prostitute. And the church was split. We will not have our pastor's son marrying a streetwalker. And it got to the place that it was almost like it was going to destroy the church. Some few said no, most said yes, or whatever the case. And one Sunday morning, <clears throat> in the midst of the service, the dear white, a dear white-headed lady, years on her age, hair white with experience, stood to her feet and asked the pastor, would you mind if I say something? He knew her. He said, certainly you can. And she said, ladies and gentlemen, it's not our pastor's son that's on trial here. It's not the young lady that's been embarrassed enough to kill a person that's on trial here. What's on trial is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And she said, Jesus Christ cleansed that young lady when she came to him in salvation. And she is just as pure as the Virgin Mary. The blood of Jesus Christ either cleanses from all sin or no sin at all. Let me say that again. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. Or no sin at all. Two thousand years ago, Jesus Christ hung on a cross and atoned. That's where the word atonement comes from. Atoned for all sin for those who will believe. Well, I don't know if I would want that or not, but for my son, well, Rahab did. Most of you don't know who Rahab is. But she was a streetwalker. She gave her heart to the Lord many, many years ago. And married one of the princes of Israel. Hallelujah. Sin is the problem. Sin and 
The fact that sin permeates society throughout the entirety of the world, not just a few places, but all places. But likewise, Jesus Christ atoned for all sin. I mean all sin, not just some, but all. Man doesn't quite know how to address sin. He doesn't know what to do about it. He has tried psychology, money, education. He has tried almost everything to no avail. But there is one answer for sin, and that is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cross that made the difference. Thank God it took the sting out of death and the bite out of sin. Now, The great day of atonement was the only day given by God as a day of fasting and prayer for Israel. When Israel, when Jesus came, Israel had lengthened that to 104 days. But the Lord only gave one day. And... On that one day, all the sin of Israel was to be atoned in a sense. It couldn't really be atoned because the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin. And before the cross, that's all they had to offer as sacrifice was the blood of bulls and goats. They had nothing else. It could not take away sin. Let me tell you, every soul in this world that's ever been saved, every man or woman, boy or girl that's ever given their heart to Christ was saved because of Calvary. There is no other. Francis and I were in a meeting in in Fort Worth, Texas some time ago. And on my way to the church that morning to prepare for the service that night, a car right ahead of me on that interstate, must have been going 100 miles an hour, hit a concrete abutment. I was the first car there. I ran to the where the driver was, and that car had made such a hit on that concrete abutment that it pushed the engine up into his chest. I knew he was dead, but sometimes in that state, people can hear something. And I leaned through the window close to his ear and I said to him, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, repeat this after me as best you can. I saw no movement of lips. The heart was barely beating. But I prayed that prayer just in case he could understand and give his heart to Christ.
Did he? Well, I have no way to know. I don't know. But I'm glad I tried. On the great day of atonement, it was called in the Bible a great day. This great day of atonement, whenever the, all the sins of Israel were to be prayed over and forgiven. And only God could look at the hearts of the people and tell who really could have sins forgiven. And the high priest, this was the only time he could enter the Holy of Holies. And the entirety of the year, he could only go in this one day. He took off his beautiful clothing of glory and beauty. Designed by the Holy Spirit. They said when Alexander the Great was to come against Jerusalem, he had a dream. He dreamed a man walked out from the city with the most beautiful garment he had ever seen in his life. Asking him to spare the city. And Alexander the Great, the next morning, stood before the gate. And the high priest walked out. And he had on the same clothing that Alexander had seen in his dream. His normal procedure was surrender and live or rebel and die. But he walked away and made no effort against Jerusalem because of the dream that he had. And the high priest would put on a snow white garment. and would go to the brazen altar and get coals of fire, put it in a censer, and go back into the Holy of Holies. If he did the slightest thing wrong, he would have been killed by God at that. And He filled a container full of incense. What for? When he went into the Holy of Holies to offer sacrifice, he would put coals of fire on the mercy seat and then pour the entire container of the fragrance on the coals of fire on the mercy seat. Why? It was not a sacrifice. Why? He did it because there is a stink to sin. It's, it speaks of death. You read in your Bible over and over again when it mentions sin, it'll be followed by death. And it would create a, an aroma that was pleasant. In the nostrils of the high priest and in the nostrils of God. Now how would that coincide with now. It does. And I'll tell you how. Whenever the preacher preaches on the cross, preaches on the cross, 
It creates a very pleasant aroma in the nostrils of God. When the singer sings, the young lady sang out here this morning. When the choir sang about the cross, even to hint at it, let me tell you how important this is. All sin must be judged. Now understand that. It must be judged. It will be judged. For the child of God, it was judged at Calvary. Thank God. Thank God I don't have to undergo a judgment. It was done at Calvary. But if you're not saved, it's the cause of sickness, sorrow, heartache, war, problems untold. Because sin must be judged. And it will be judged. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank God for that. That's for the child of God. The unsaved person won't do that. But judgment must come upon sin. It must. Or, and it did come upon Jesus Christ. In our behalf. On our behalf. Praise God for that. I remember some time back, I read an article in a paper about the death of a particular man. He, he, had, he had spent his life feeding children that did not have anything in their homes, if you would call it that. He took the money he made. He drove an old rattle trap pickup truck that was long since worn out when he could have bought a new one, but he used the money to help feed those that were hungry. When he died, and you can understand something of this nature, when he died, they didn't have a building big enough to seat the people to come to his funeral. I read the account And there was another man. I did not know the first one. I just read about him in the paper. This one that I mentioned, I did know him. He was a very close friend of my dad. His life was lived in drunkenness. My dad was in business with him for a while and had to, had to bow out because of the alcohol. He had a little boy. He was about four years old. Curls over his head. And the child took pneumonia and died. 
I was at the funeral along with my dad and others, a few, it wasn't many there. I watched this man take his fist and beat the top of that little casket and say to God as he cursed God, he called him every vile name, you took my baby. He's all I had. You took him. I hate you. Only his language was far worse than mine. A few months passed. The lady that started the little Assembly of God Church in Faraday, Louisiana, happened to come through Faraday, she and her mother, and stopped by my uncle's home that had helped build that church. And in the course of the conversation, she asked him, she said, Well, how is George doing? Uncle Lee, and I was born in Uncle Lee's home, March 15th, 1935. He said, I'm glad you asked. He's dying. I doubt he will make it through the day. She said, well, where does he live? He told her. And she hurriedly got in her car, she and her mother, and drove to the designated address, was admitted into the room, and sure enough, he was dying. She said, George, He was one that had come to church, but never would say yes to Christ. His life was spent in drunkenness, alcohol. He said, oh yes, I remember you, oh yes. She said, George, it's time to go. You're not going to make it much longer. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. And I want you to pray with me. He looked at her. Tears started down his face as he prayed with her, Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry for my sins, the way I've lived, the things I've done. He prayed that prayer and died a few minutes later. Now here's what I wanted to say to you. I don't know the man that fed the children I know it was commendable what he did, but it will not save your soul. And if he did not know the Lord and died without God, despite the fact that he had done such great and wonderful things, he would have died eternally lost. And the man that I just mentioned, a friend of my dad, he died and went to heaven. Despite the fact of his life, 
but he accepted Jesus because Jesus is the one who died on the cross of Calvary and made it possible for us to be saved. Without what he did, we could not have been saved. Now that's hard for the world to understand. I remember a few months ago, they had it over television, they aired it. They were remodeling the Washington Monument in Washington. It had not had anything done to it in years, and they were remodeling it. They had a man on who had given $37 million to help remodel that monument. They asked him after the ceremony was over, Do you believe there is a heaven? Oh, yes, I think there is, he said. Well, do you think you will go there? Oh, yes, I think I will. I just gave $37 million to help refurbish that monument. I think I'll go. But the sad fact is, $37 $37 million would not buy you a place in heaven. And I thought most of the world is in the same condition. Claiming something that does not exist. The man that fed the children did a commendable thing but it will not purchase the ticket, so to speak, to the portals of glory. Only acceptance of Jesus Christ will do that. Would you bow your heads, please? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace and your love. I ask, O Lord, that these simple words that we have said, that they would strike home to the hearts of those that are here. I'm going to ask right now, how many of you Are there some here that doesn't know the Lord? Sin will destroy you. The only solution for it is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. There is no other. On this side over here, if you do not know the Lord, you're not sure about your salvation. Would you slip up your hand, please? This section right here. This section in the middle. You're not sure if you're saved or not. Raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. On this side, I want you to stand, please, everyone to stand. Dear lady, I want you to step out, if you will. I want to pray with you, and I will not embarrass you, I promise that. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Are there others 
If so, uh, like I said, I won't embarrass you. Would you step out and say yes? Praise God. I'm going to pray right now with you. And I want the congregation to repeat it with me and repeat it with you as well. And all over the world, if you do not know Jesus Christ, this is your time to be saved. Now would you pray, Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry for my sins, the way I've lived. Please forgive me and cleanse me with your precious blood from all unrighteousness. With my mouth, I claim Jesus Christ as the Savior of my soul. In my heart, I receive him in my life. And according to his word, and according to his word I, accept Jesus Christ I accept Jesus Christ as the Savior of my soul, as the Savior of my soul. And, I him, and I make him the Lord of my life. The Lord of my life. And according to his word, and according to his word I, am washed, I am washed, I am cleansed, I am, cleansed, I am, saved. I am saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Gabriel. Well, there's a new name written down in glory. Turn around, tell your neighbor you love him. Be back with us tonight, 6 o'clock p.m. For Dr. David Watts, we love you. God bless you. Well, there's a new day. hope you were blessed and enjoyed this live service from Family Worship Center. Family Worship Center, located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at Jimmy Swaggart Ministries, holds three services weekly, Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday evening at 6 p.m., and Wednesday at 7 p.m., all Central Time. All services are broadcast live on the Sun Life Broadcasting Network, Sun Life Radio, online at sunlifetv.com, and on the free SBN Now app. To join the Family Worship Center Media Church, call one 800 288-8350 or join at jsm.org. Live services are produced by the Sun Life Broadcasting Network.